This is a busy time for so many of us. Again, if we're in the US, Thanksgiving kind of starts that wave, that freight train of holidays. And it's it's almost like a blur between now and New Year's. And one of the things for me I notice is that when the New Year gets here, I feel like I need another week or two to have a break just to recover from the hecticness of the holidays. Three practices that we can do that will positively impact the new year. And we can work on them now. We can work on them after the new year or after that two week break that you might need between the holidays and the new year. All of these practices are around incorporating mindfulness. So mindfulness is this idea of uh, present moment, being right here, right now, because a lot of our stress comes from either worrying about something that happened in the past or we're living in the future and we're worried about something that hasn't even happened yet. And I'm super, super guilty of both of those. Something in the past, I go over it in my head again and again and again. Or if, um, you know, for example, doing this live for you, uh, there was a lot of going on in my head to prepare and thinking about what if and oh, the tech and this and making sure I had everything straight. That is the exact opposite of mindfulness. Mindfulness says be right here right now. So what are three practices that we can do that will help us to be right here right now and also benefit us into the future? The first one and I will admit this one was tough for me too. It's still tough. I work at it every year, but it's making a plan for the new year. And all of these practices that I'm sharing with you, there is research and science behind them. There have been studies done that show the positive results. So back to planning, our, our first practice that we can do. When we write down a plan that signals to your brain that this is important. I need to pay attention to this and the brain's incredible, right? It starts to set up a task list for you and it's just running in the background. So as you're planning, your brain is already working hard to help move you in that direction, but it needs a roadmap. It needs step A, step B, step C. So when you take the time to plan out what you wanna do for the new year, that really helps your brain to cement that. And one of the things that I like doing when I am planning for the new year is to do a little bit of a celebration or a look back on the previous year. And I know for everyone, the last couple of years, there hasn't been a lot of great things to look back on. But if you don't look back, you can't see how far forward you've come. And even though it may feel like a one step forward and a two steps back, it's still forward movement, just maybe not at the pace that we wanna do. So taking the time, sitting down, celebrating the past, and then planning for the new year, planning for future goals. Your brain loves that. The second mindfulness practice is doing a vision board. And this one is my absolute favorite to do. And honestly, I haven't done one in a couple of years, but I am for sure this year planning to dust one off and do it again. Vision boards, again, there is research and studies behind them. Vision boards, if you're not familiar with them, they are visual representations of your goals. 
So your brain operates left side, right side. It operates in facts and figures, but it also operates very well in images and pictures. So if you do the first one where you plan out your year and you give facts and figures and steps and goals, then come back and enhance it with a vision board. Take those goals and turn them into images and pictures and place them on a poster board. I'm, I'm old school. I like to do the poster board and cut out my images um, or print them off from the internet. There's nothing wrong with that or if maybe you prefer digital. I will say that there is some research that shows when we actually write out. So I know a couple of you in here mentioned doing digital planners or a digital vision board. Something is better than nothing. However, there is research that shows the, the connection between the brain and the hand when it's writing out, and it's way more impactful than doing it digital. However, at the end of the day, it's about whatever will put you in the frame of mind to do it and to complete it. So if digital is the way that you wanna go for this, then absolutely go that direction. The vision board, that's our second mindfulness practice. And the third mindfulness practice that we can do that helps us to set up for a positive new year is practicing gratitude. Now, interestingly, if you're in the US, that's something that is big that happens in November around Thanksgiving and practicing gratitude and being thankful. The great thing about the gratitude practice is it's really a year round practice. And the more you practice, the more benefit that you get from practicing gratitude. And there's a lot of different ways. There's no one way to practice gratitude. Um, I've done it where I just list out three or four or five things that I'm grateful for that day. Sometimes it's closer to journaling and maybe I'm journaling out the positive things that happened for me that day. And some days it's you're, you're digging really hard to find something to be grateful about. Maybe it's that you were able to get out of bed and put your feet on the floor. But research does show that those who practice gratitude consistently tend to have a better well-being. They tend to be happier. So there's a lot of connections between practicing gratitude and feeling happy, feeling more positive about life. And also I found it interesting that when you keep a gratitude journal or you practice gratitude, that it creates more resili resiliency. That's a hard word to say in the morning. Uh, but when we can do our best to find something to be grateful for, that it truly helps us to bounce back from challenging times. It doesn't mean that it eliminates the bad times, but it does help us to kind of dig for those nuggets that will help us um, be in a different perspective. So those are my three mindfulness practices that will help set you up for the new year. We've got planning out your new year. We have doing a vision board, which I already mentioned was my favorite. And then finally, practicing gratitude. Thank you.